With the increasing need to generate energy from renewable systems, it's important that we can build the environments that create that renewable energy quickly and effectively, but without affecting the ecology and the environment around them. For one of our clients, SSE, this is a real challenge. They require consent to be able to build onshore wind farms. One of those aspects of consent, for example, is the health of the puffing colonies that may be affected by the wind farms. Previously, they've used still photography and students to count the number of puffins in that environment, but they needed something that was more dynamic, something that would give them a result much, much quicker. They came to us and asked us for help. We adapted a previous project and used live video streams and object detection to be able to count the puffins in real time. And that allowed them to understand exactly how the ecology of that environment's behaving. The output was really quite novel and quite impressive. So impressive that the BBC has picked it up as one of their articles within Click. So, you know, in the past, we've talked about how putting up wind turbines might affect the local wildlife. Mm. Well, Nick Quack has been out into the North Sea to find out how one energy company is trying to prevent problems for a population of puffins. Nine miles off the coast of Wick, at the far north of Scotland, it's wavy and it's windy. You can see them there on the horizon. I've come to visit the 84 turbines that make up SSE Renewables' Beatrice site. This is one of the UK's largest offshore wind farms, with enough capacity to power almost half a million homes. The UK government, though, wants enough wind energy to be generated to power all of British homes by 2030. And it's cut approval times for new offshore farms from four years to just one. Of course, it's not as simple as just sticking these things into the seabed. Right now, with offshore wind and the, the really the scale of, of development that we're going to see, we just don't yet know how that's going to impact the oceans. So we always need to think about what's the, the impact on habitats and wildlife. And, you know, especially when we're harnessing nature's resources and we need to make sure that we're protecting the natural environment too. There's loads of them. They've been conducting a study with Microsoft and Avanad on the Isle of May in Fife, home to fauna such as seals, ducklings and the much-loved puffin. This is a sanctuary for puffins, with around 80,000 nesting here each year. It's estimated because traditional counting has been done by eye, so researchers have engineered a way to keep better tabs on them. The effects that we see from building offshore wind farms isn't seen immediately within the local ecology. It's obviously an effect that takes time and what's really important is that we start monitoring the local ecology to our wind farms so that we understand the impacts we have, so that we can implement corrective actions and potentially have a positive impact. They've installed four artificially intelligent camera systems to count puffins and monitor their flight each equipped with their own custom-made marine-grade jackets. You can't buy this off the shelf. Right, OK. And we've had these created specifically for these four cameras which are on this island. Right. And so the puffins are under CCTV surveillance? They are, 24 hours a day. Are they happy with that? <laughs> is that a wee windscreen wiper? That is indeed, yes. And that allows us to perform periodic maintenance, ensuring that we can clean the lens of any salty deposits which picked up from the harsh sea air. Puffins generally, when they're congregating around their burrows, tend to face out looking down this hill. So we have one camera position further down the hill looking straight onto the puffin, giving a good view of the portrait, whereas this gives a good side-on side side view of the profile of the puffin. You're quite right, I can see one right there actually. Exactly, Looking yes. side-on. So as part of the trial, we really wanted to understand what would give the AI the best opportunity to recognise a puffin. In February, this was just a barren ground. There was no grass, let alone flowers. And you can see here now all these white flowers that have bloomed. So the white flowers actually merge with the breast of the puffin in terms of the pixels for the AI to pick up. So it was actually tricking the AI. Oh, right, OK. Yeah, and actually resulted in slight inaccuracies until we retrained the model right. to identify the puffins in amongst the white flowers. Wow. So actually ended up uh, not being as simple as you thought it was going to no, be. No, it then. certainly was not, but that was the reason for the trial. We wanted to explore, understand what works well, what doesn't work well, 
and, and yeah, there's many takeaways, one of them including seasonal training of the model. This is chiefly a data gathering exercise, the initial entries for a long-term Puffin digital database. Already we're building up quite a strong picture of how the puffins behave during certain times of day, understanding you know, when there's peak puffin activity versus low puffin activity. So very soon we should start to be able to understand when there's any anomalies in this behaviour. But at the moment it is still very early and we are still trying to understand the data and, and really start pulling it together. We've got very narrow window of time in order to ensure that we can protect um, a lot of ecosystems that are in huge danger. And so it's something that's incredibly close to Microsoft's heart. Is there a bit of responsibility or a bit of maybe even guilt sometimes when it comes to addressing um, the climate change issues surrounding technology companies having such a carbon footprint? Well, we know that um, you know, the, the, the carbon emissions that Microsoft have, it represents less than 1% of the global carbon emissions. But you're right, the, you know, the data centre footprint is one that um, we're really focused on. Uh, and I think in the world that we live today, the demand for data and technology uh, is one that's growing. And to satisfy that demand, we'll need more electricity. The thing is, if we're to reach government targets and lessen our dependence on burning fossil fuels, then we're going to have to embrace renewable energy. Let's just hope the rollout is a harmonious one for everyone's sake. So hopefully from that you can see the effect that it had. We were able to count the puffins effectively. This has enabled them to reduce the consent time by up to two years for a wind farm creating much more renewable energy more sooner than, than previously was possible. Again, huge benefit to what matters to SSE. And this is what we do at Avenard. We like these types of challenge. We're able to adapt, again, use innovation, use technology to help solve problems. If you've got something that matters to you, please contact us on the links below or contact us through social media because we'd love to try and help.